Well, good morning, everybody. It is uh, day three on our tandem wall build. It is still breezy. Uh, we're, we've had winds every day that I've been trying to shoot this, so I apologize for all the wind noise. So I thought I'd start out here in my truck. Uh, just showed up to the job site, getting ready to get all the tools out. Uh, today, uh, we have some more product being delivered. Uh, we did run a little bit short. Uh, and this is the first time I've done uh, a project to this extent, so I I was kind of guessing a little bit and thought I could find, kind of fill in the um, at the end with what we actually needed to finish. So that's kind of what we've done. Uh, so my supplier's bringing uh, uh, some more materials this morning. I had some extra base blocks at the uh, storage unit where we uh, store our equipment and trailers. So I grabbed those and uh, so we'll get started on the base for the grill, um, get that laid out. And then by that time we should hopefully have some more materials here. I have enough to get some stuff done. So let's get started on that. Um, should be a good day and hopefully we'll get this thing uh, pretty close to wrapped up. All right, so we got our base blocks in uh, for the grill island, finally. Uh, so what I've done is mark the perimeter of the actual uh, block. Um, that gives us a straight line on the back side of the face. Uh, so we keep everything straight, and then I squared it uh, using my uh, carpenter square, and then I, I double-checked it with my paver square because it's a little bit bigger, uh, gets a little bit farther to reach. So we're looking good there. And then we're gonna run in a U-shape here and uh, we'll stop for the opening of the refrigerator uh, because we'll want that to be uh, level with the pavers. So uh, we'll get the perimeter built up and uh, then we can just stack up from there. So here I decided to be a little more flexible uh, instead of setting everything, uh, like that's how it has to be. My grill was uh, designed at eight, in, eight feet uh, outside to outside. Uh, since we're working with these corners like this, we want to be able to tie everything in without cutting. So I already have my back wall established, so that's why I went with this back wall first. So I got down here to the end, uh, made some adjustments to what would be closest to the eight foot, and I added two and a half inches. Now we'll go down this row as we turn the corner and uh, we'll kind of get a gauge for where that ends. We can then make our fridge opening and only cut on one side. So that's the beauty of this system is reducing cuts, waste, and time. I'm also going with a 28 inch uh, depth here. So we added a four inch block. Uh, what I did was I just cut that off on my saw. So we'll see how this lays out as we turn the corner. Using a uh, small and large only adds an inch and a quarter. So I think I'm going to go that route. And then all of our cutting will be on that end uh, where we meet with the uh, seat bench. So 
it should work out pretty good. So I'll just alternate. Next time I'll do small, large, and large, small, and so on and so forth uh, to break up that. So the, the medium and the, I could probably use two mediums, but then I'd have a bond line going all the way up. So, uh, so we're gonna go this route and see how it works out. We got our corner established and our fridge opening. This worked out really well. Um, it's pretty much where I had planned on it being yesterday. Uh, so got a nice level cut. The nice thing about this is we can also use our IQ table saw because we can lay these faces flat like a paver. Uh, that has a 16 and a half inch blade, so it cuts you know a five inch block pretty easily. But this is really nice. We get a nice straight cut. Um, so now this will be the other side of the opening for the fridge. And uh, another thing about versatility with this stuff is uh, we need a 24 and a half inches um, depth for our fridge. So we were right at 24 uh, where this edge of that block is. So we can take uh, the block and it has a get out of the shadow here. The block actually has a break point. Uh, so you can just knock it, as I'll show you here, and uh, that allows you to make the blocks a little bit smaller, uh, do some different things with them. So we did that here, utilized that, and uh, with all the different connection points, we were able to just flip the block sideways, put clips in instead of having this, and then where our electrical comes up. Um, I didn't really plan all this, but it, it worked out pretty good. Uh, we still use the concrete clip and then just turn this to clip into that connection point. And then I glued all of these in place. So we can stack this up, uh, tie it into the back, and then uh, continue on. And I'm working on configuring the uh, access doors and grill for the front. So shot our elevation uh, where our pavers are gonna be. Transfer that so center of this is uh, about three inches higher than uh, where our paper will be. So I might bring that up slightly. I'm doing all the math and then we'll figure that out. So that's where we are now. So we're gonna keep building this up. We are still waiting on our the backer blocks and the rest of our uh, faces. So we should be here anytime. Had enough stuff to get all this done laid out. We got a few more left we can work with. So we'll keep it. So a little update, I uh, had to stop for a minute on the door opening because I had a bad measurement from the website. So I called my supplier, 
on the grill and doors and got all the right measurements. So glad I confirmed that because this has been a little difficult to take down. So it's coming up. I'm up to the level on the back uh, that I stopped yesterday. So it gets one more row uh, on the back of the wall and then one on this grill. And I think uh, one of the things we can do, I want to be about three inches higher and three more paper. Uh, so we can be about 36, 37 inches with our top. So we can uh, take this, which I did here for the for the doors. We can just take this and cut, and then cut these in half. Um, and then we can add it to the top. So what that'll do is get it above um, the back of the wall because we don't have the same countertop as we do cap for the back of the wall. So. I think that'll look really good. So we'll kind of assess that when we get to the top. Uh, I think that's the direction I'm looking. So day three is uh, about to wrap up, but we're uh, making progress and we have a little more time. So we will see what we can do before the end of the day. So that's a wrap on day three. I got this up to probably where we're going to stop for a while until we get our uh, granite picked out and I need to get my openings, make sure those are correct for the grill. And we have access doors and a, of course a gas grill going here and then a refrigerator. So we need to get our uh, paver height up, make sure we have clearance on everything. So uh, with the fridge and all that. So probably leave it here for a bit, but we can start doing our base for our patio. Uh, in the next few days and uh, let's go over here we ended up getting this done as well so end of day three is coming to a close one thing these columns are pretty cool because you just put the uh, you just connect these onto the blocks this way it allows you to make different size columns as well but this is the 20 inch or 21 inch uh, column so it works out really well. So 21, and we got a cap that we're gonna put on it. Um, so we'll uh, we'll pick this up when we start doing the caps and uh, lighting, and we're gonna do the bull nose on the seat. So thanks everybody for watching. Hope you guys are finding this informative. We're having a good time. This is the first time we've done something this extensive with this wall, so it's going pretty well.